Hello and welcome to this lesson on the tune Emma's Waltz. Uh, this is a, a tune from Finland and I've designed this lesson specifically for this um, GD concertina. Now my concertina has got 30 buttons, it's got three rows, uh, but this lesson is specifically for you if you've got a, a two row um, GD Anglo concertina, but obviously if you've got a three row you can play it as well. You may have a, a budget end GD, uh, very often these um, fairly cheap concertinas have the kind of wood grain effect done in uh, black felt tip pens. You might have one of those. Anyway, you know, it's for a 20 button instrument. I've made it as straightforward as I can. Um, and you can play this on several levels. I mean, you can play just the, the tune, just the, the top line, the, you know, the treble clef. Um, or, you know, if you, you feel like you want to stretch yourself a bit more, then put the bass line in the bass clef as well and you'll have a nice little accompaniment. We're in the key of B minor, that needn't worry you. You've got two sharps in the key signature, F sharp and C sharp. So all Fs and all Cs are sharpened in this piece. And normally that would suggest D major, but because uh, we are playing in a minor key, we're playing in the relative minor of D major, which is B minor. Don't worry if you don't understand that, it really doesn't matter. Um, three beats of the bar. So a waltz, obviously, Emma's waltz. Um, and you can see there's a, a sign at the top that says one crotchet equals 135. That means that you can set your metronome to 135 beats per minute. So I'm going to go through this really carefully, really slowly. I'm just going to assume you're a beginner. And uh, so let's get started. The first bar is what we call a pickup bar. And both of the notes are on the right hand side. And they are as follows. They are B and D. And it says push underneath the first uh, note there. That means you're pushing the bellows towards the closed position like this, okay? Obviously not as much as that. And in fact, it says at the top there, pull bellows out before you start. So make sure you pull the bellows out quite a long way so you've got plenty of air to push in. If the concertina is closed up at the beginning there, uh, you're going to struggle. You're gonna, it's going to close. And of course, if the bellows close up completely, you don't get any sound. So pull the bellows out quite a long way before you start. Um, I put my concertina on my right leg. My right cheek of my concertina goes on my right leg. Um, but some people play the other way around with the left end on the right leg. Um, I've got my foot on a guitar footstool to bring my leg up a bit here. Um, getting comfortable is a very important part of this process. So make sure you're comfortable before you start. Hands through the straps thumbs on top and make sure your right hand thumb can reach this uh you can see that there this button here which is the air button because that's an intrinsic part of the performance so pull the bellows out these notes are b and d both on the push fingers two and three um if you're not sure about where to find these notes i've done a chart of notes now you can see You've got all the notes in the treble clef named uh, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, so forth. Underneath the D it says five push, which means to say that would be button five, this button here. And because the head of the note is normal, it means it's found on the G row. So it would be this note here. Okay, the next note on that list is E, it says five pull. So same button, button number five pulled out. So how do we number our buttons, or how do I number my buttons, because every teacher is different the way I do it. So I start down here, and these buttons here, numbered one, two, three, four, five on all the rows, carrying on over on the treble side here, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it kind of goes round and over one to ten. Okay, and you can see some of the notes in this chart have got asterisks and you look for the note that's got the same number of asterisks and it's the same note but found somewhere else on the concertina but we'll come back to that as we go so you'll notice that the first note like i say is b and it says on our chart of notes that b note is seven push okay so button seven is the second one down on this side and it's got a normal head so it's on the uh, G row. The G row is, well on my concertina of course I've got three rows. So just ignore this this front row if you like. Both sides, ignore that row and just be aware of these two rows. This row is the G row. Okay, so G row coming up here and down here 
and the D row is the one nearest to me, the player, comes all the way up here and down here. So normal head, so it's G row, button seven, push, and the number two on top means finger two. Index finger is finger number one, finger two is that one. So that's your first note, and it's a B, and if you don't know how to read music, um, there are some sheets that you can download off my website to help you do just that. So you've got a B and a D, and the D is uh, on the chart, you'll see that the D, well it's found in two places in this music, you can find it on button 8 on the push on the uh, G row, also on button 6 on the push on the D row, and you'll see that that note has a diamond shaped head, all the notes in my music, this is peculiar to my music, all the notes on this D row, the row nearest to me, they have diamond shaped heads. But here it's on the G rows, in fact it's the next door neighbour to the one we just played. So B and D, next door neighbour notes, fingers two and three, and this is what we call a pickup bar. So you're going to count one, two, three, one, two, three. So I would count a bar of three to start with as, a, as an intro. Leave the first beat of the next bar and come in on beats two and three. One, two, three, and that's your uh, intro, your pickup bar. You notice in the bass clef, the clef underneath, um, let's talk about clefs. Obviously, the tune is played in the treble clef. That's that really beautiful scrolling, curly, whirly sign there. And the bass clef is the more, more simple of the two signs. And that clef in this bar, this pickup bar, has got a little block in it, which means to say that it's a minimum rest. So there's nothing in the accompaniment here. It's purely these two notes that you have to worry about in this bar. So there we are, we've made a start. A lot to talk about, I know. Um, so one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, and that's your start. Now, where it says letter A, this is the first section. There are three sections in this tune, A, B, and C. The A section is um, obviously the first section, and the B and the C, they're the same, but an octave apart. So we're doing the A section to start with, and you'll notice the first note in the treble clef of the A section has got a diamond head, and it's an F sharp. Now, it's on the top line. If you look along the line, you see there's a sharp sign in the what we call the key signature on that line. So that means that all Fs in this tune are sharp. And F sharp with the diamond head there, you can see, if you look at your chart of notes, it's seven push. So button number seven, this one here, and it's on that one there. So the note is F sharp, and it's on the push, and you'll see that it's a dotted crotchet. That means it takes up the whole of the first beat and a half of the second beat. And the next note is a G, it's in the space above the stave there, uh, it's the next button down, see it's a diamond head, and that's a quaver. And notice it says pull underneath, it means to say you have to pull the bellows out to get that note. Um, and then you come back to the F sharp. So that bar is like that. So you count it, one, two, and three. And when you change direction of the bellows, either pushing or pulling, you don't have to yank at them, it's just a tiny movement. So you count that one, two, and three. So it's F sharp, G, F sharp, button uh, seven, button eight, button seven on the D row. Okay, now that's the tune. Now the left hand, we're gonna do a kind of an um, pa, pa with this. And the um, the note at the beginning of the bar there, you have to realize that the notes in the bass clef are different to the notes in the treble clef. Right, that first note there, finger number two, it's in the space above the stave, and the note is actually B. Okay, so this note here, you'll see from your chart of notes that it's button four on the push. This one here, you see that, okay? And the next note is a D, it's the next button up, finger number one, so it's button uh, five, and these notes are crotchets, so you simply count them one, two, three. One, two, three. In fact, the next bar is the same. You can see, can't you? So it's your um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa. Now, of course, the treble and the and the bass don't go together, do they? You can see that the bass is very simple. One, two, three. One, two, three. And the right hand there, the tune, if you like, it goes one, two, and three. 
So you'll play your left hand very, very straightforwardly and the right hand you'll have to slot in and out of that like this. Now, when you play that note on the pull on the right hand, make sure your left hand is not playing anything. Make sure you've lifted, otherwise you'll have an unwanted note on the pull. Like that. So the overall count of the bow is one, two, and three. Obviously, if you're a real beginner, just play, just play the tune. Don't worry about the left hand just yet. By the way, that sign at the beginning of that bar, thick line, thin line, two dots, that's repeat, so I'm going to come back to this a bit later on.